Good evening from Paris. President Macron is nothing if not a fighter. Encouraged by the result of the first round of the elections last night, he took his campaign to the industrial heartland of his rival Marine Le Pen today, desperately seeking working class votes, which he needs to win the second round of the election in two weeks from now. He'll have heard one accusation above all others, that he's out of touch with ordinary France. In the end, the future of this country hinges on one question. What is greater here, fear of Le Pen, the hard right-wing nationalist, or hatred of Macron, the incumbent? Traditional parties like the Socialists and the Republicans that once ruled France for decades have almost disappeared completely, leaving President Macron alone and lonely in the centre, facing a barrage of extremes. In the glare of the morning, one thing has become obvious. In the French Republic, a rising tide of extremism is challenging a president who alone embodies the establishment. Last night at Emmanuel Macron's camp, they weren't sure whether to prepare for defeat or victory. Some leaked polls had him losing. Then, as the polls closed, almost everything changed. The atmosphere here two minutes ago was that of a wake. There is massive relief here in Macron's headquarters that he's done relatively well in the first round. 28% is pretty good. He will now go head to head with Marine Le Pen in the next round of the election, the decisive one, a replay of five years ago, not necessarily with the same result. Emmanuel Macron thanked the 9.8 million French who had voted for him. But he knows that to hold on to his job, he needs to persuade millions of others that he feels their grievances and will do something about them. He once promised to change the system. Now he is the system. In the far right and far left are snapping at his heels. In the crowd, France's defense minister, Florence Pali. So the extremes are in the majority, right? It's 50 percent. So yeah. now we, we will have to fight against uh, non-participation, uh, yeah. that's the first. And uh, we will have also uh, to uh, uh, explain what is uh, President Macron's uh, proposals sure. for the future, yeah. a France which uh, is supposed to be strong has an ambition uh, for itself yeah. and uh, for He's not been very good at selling his record, though, has he? I mean, he's done quite a lot, but he's not been very good at selling his achievements. He has not very much time to do so uh, due to the international environment, but uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, he will spend uh, the time necessary uh, to explain what is his project for France. The most common accusation against Macron is that he's too aloof and elitist. But he's also embraced a multicultural France, like few others. Okay. How do you feel tonight? Amazing. Amazing? <laughs> yes. You were making a sort of comme ci, comme ça face there. No, no, no. I am... Uh, Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. Now I'm so whew, excited. <laughs> excited, very excited. But he could still lose second round, right? No, 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 no. It's possible. Everything's possible. No, no. She would beg to differ. This election was Marine Le Pen's third attempt at the presidency and so far her best result. Her forte is still to channel the resentment of a France that yearns for a whiter, more predictable past. Ce qui se jouera ce 24 avril n'est pas seulement un vote de circonstance, mais un choix de société et même de civilisation. De votre vote dépend en effet sur tout le territoire français la légitime prépondérance de la culture et de la langue française. Turns out her Achilles heel is her past admiration for this man. She liked his strongman image, he liked her opposition to the EU and NATO, and now she would love France to forget these snaps. It's on every TV show, every member of government was saying, oh, look at uh, Marine Le Pen, she's a puppet of Vladimir Putin. If you elect her, you're basically electing Vladimir Putin in France. I'm not sure it will work that much. Here's the thing. Um, Ukraine and the war in Ukraine is important, but it's mostly about geopolitics. 
So the French are also mostly worried right now about what's happening in France. They are worried about how they'll put gas in their tank, how they'll, if they'll have money in their wallet at the end of the month. Mm. Um, the cost of living crisis. Yeah, exactly. Not a single vote to Madame Le Pen, says the man who could swing this election. Jean-Luc Mélenchon, old war horse of the hard left, anti-American, anti-NATO, anti-business. He got a staggering 7 million votes. He fears Le Pen more than he hates Macron, but he has very little control over his exuberant supporters who follow in France's revolutionary tradition. But forget red. It's blue and yellow that matters these days. The Ukrainian colors draped around Marianne, the matriarch of the Republic. The war has changed everything, including this election. Well, with me here in Paris on the rooftop is Sophie Pedder. She's the bureau chief of The Economist and author of a highly praised biography of Emmanuel Macron. Thanks for coming on the program, Sophie. Um, the world is different to five years ago when they last had a face-off against each other. How does that change the, the second round of the elections? Well, Marine Le Pen has been here and has failed and she knows what it takes. You know, she knows how tough it is. She knows what it's like to hold the debate against Macron and she's going to be much better prepared. She's going to be much better briefed. Um, but Macron is also the experienced statesman. You know, I think that he, uh, he's got a track record to defend. He's able to point to things he's done, like bring down unemployment and, uh, you know, boost the European Union. And so I think that that also makes it more difficult. He's not the newcomer he was, the fresh-faced newcomer we saw. He'd uh, be judged on his record. And I can't really work out whether incumbency in France is a good thing or a bad thing. Well, in, traditionally, it's not at all a good thing. They, the French love to kick their presidents out. Uh, and actually, you know, they have a word for it, dégagisme, which means, you know, get rid of the old guys. Um, beheading. Beheading, in a way. You know, there's an old tradition goes back quite a long way. But I think, uh, you know, Emmanuel Macron, in that respect, is quite an astonishing first-round score to have got nearly 28% of the votes. So you have to go back to Mitterrand in uh, 88 to find a, a first-round score for an incumbent president as high as that. So surprisingly, despite that, that uh, you know, urge to get rid of the guys who are in power, he has actually managed a pretty good first round score, Macron. And how important is the question of her links to Vladimir Putin? I mean, you know, there was the 9 million euro loan from a Russian bank, which I think she repaid after the last campaign, or perhaps is still repaying. And then, of course, she said some very admiring things about him. She has. I mean, the astonishing thing is it doesn't seem to have so far damaged her in this campaign. Uh, she has condemned the war in Ukraine, but apart from that, all those sort of legacy, that legacy relationship with Putin remains. I think it will come under scrutiny. I think that Macron won't let her off the hook there. I think that he is going to make sure that it becomes an issue for the French in a way that it hasn't been so far. So I would expect him to pretty to attack pretty hard on that when it comes to their debate. There are some areas of Paris, not this one, I hasten to add, that voted 60% for Jean-Luc Mélenchon, you know, the, can the veteran candidate from the far left. What's going on there? Well, it's, I think he, he, he draws an affection. You know, people, young people like him. He did these uh, rallies where he had a hologram appearing in 11 other cities and, and he was in one. He, he's almost the sort of Bernie Sanders of, of, of French politics. But I think he also, he got the tactical vote. That's what really happened. So a lot of people who, on the left, who saw the disastrous performance in the polls of their own candidates, the Socialists, the mm. Greens, saw in Mélenchon the one who might keep out Marine Le Pen. And that's, I think, what inflated his vote. But some people might, some of his support, might also vote for her. I wonder to what extent this election isn't really about left versus right, but about establishment versus anti-establishment. You know, the monarchy against the revolution. Well, in a way, that's what Macron was all about. You know, when he went and campaigned five years ago as this electoral novice that nobody knew about, his whole campaign was about realigning French party politics. He always said, you know, Europe, the environment, these mm. issues don't divide between left and right anymore. They divide between the sort of liberal centre and the nationalist extremes. And I think that well, that's what we, you said you're in your introduction. It's left him with a very, very strong centre, but also incredibly lonely. And with these fringe candidates now, or the extremes, as his only opposition. And finally, what's your hunch? And if she wins, what happens to France and Europe? Well, I mean, that's, uh, as you said, this is going to be a really difficult time for Europe. It would lead to a complete breakdown of the Franco-German relationship. Mm. It would lead to new alliances with Hungary, uh, with Poland, uh, and, and a sort of mm. dismantling, in a sense, with it from within. So I think that it would be a, a difficult time indeed for the European Union, to put it mildly. I won't ask for a prediction. Sophie Pedder, thank you very much indeed. Well, joining me now is Roland Lescure from Macron's La République En Marche party. Thanks for coming on the programme, Roland. Um, 
Thanks to be honest, much, what indeed. I find absolutely astonishing in this country is the number of people that you speak to who don't just not like Emmanuel Macron, but absolutely hate him. Why is that? What's he done to offend so many people? Well, I'd like to start by saying that at least nearly 30% of French people voted for him, so they hated, but not be as widely dispersed. It's true to say that it's, it's someone who doesn't leave people indifferent. He's been charging through reforms for the first two years of his mandate, then he's been facing crisis, and everyone's agreed on the fact that he's faced those crises with willingness, with leadership, but sometimes also with very strong opposition. I mean, it's, it's not rare that an incumbent faces opponent that all are against him, and first and foremost against him. So he's had 11 people, 11 other candidates for the last six months saying very bad things about him. So at the end of the day, I do think that hopefully the next two weeks will be able to, for him to show that more than 50% of French voters should trust him, especially compared with the current competition, which I believe is not up to the standards we should have. And what does it say about France that this country now has, you know, more voters, certainly in the presidential elections, on the extreme side of politics than on the more established mainstream side of politics? What does that tell you about the yeah, nature well, of the republic? Yeah, well, it, 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 it portrays a pretty divided country, and you live in a country that's been pretty divided for a while, too, on other issues. And, you know, you can see the same phenomenon in the States, in Hungary, in Poland. You know, we are at a very difficult crossroad. We're getting out of a pandemic. We're getting out of a very big economic crisis. We have got war at the doorsteps of Europe. It's not necessarily a surprise that countries get divided. Mm. We've had globalization winners and losers. We've got the countryside and, and the urban cities. We've got, you know, people who've, who've gained from the last 30 years mm. of, of uh, economic development and people who feel they've lost. The way it expresses itself in France in a very French way is extreme right and extreme mm. left. The idea of Emmanuel Macron, who's now the only man standing, because as you've probably noticed, the traditional left and right wing parties are dead, sure. is to convince the majority of people that the way forward mm. is moderation, the way forward is optimism, and the way forward is progress okay. in Europe. Not easy. Right. So if he gets re-elected in two weeks' time, how difficult will it for him be for him to actually enact any of the reforms that he's been promising? Because, you know, the last time around, he was swept to power on a wave of enthusiasm. And even then, we had the gilets jaunes burning down parts of Paris. Yeah, well, we're going to have to change methods for sure, and he's already admitted it. So the idea is to try to build more consensus after the election, if he gets elected. As you know, after the presidential election comes the parliamentary election, for which we hopefully will have a majority to back him. But even with that majority, I think we're going to have to try to build more consensus in France on difficult reforms like pensions, mm. Um, you know, full employment, okay. which is our target, and, and, and you know, institutional okay. reform, which is a big deal in France, okay. which we haven't been able right. to, to make it through. Got, got to leave it there, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, we've run out of time. But Roland Lescure, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.